Today I am out in the Sierra and Foothills and I am looking for Hebestatus thevenetti, the Thevenet's trepro spider. And this is one of two corklid spider species that we have here in uh, California. Little areas like this are what I'm checking. You can see in here, the erosion isn't too bad. You'll see there's little bits of moss in here, which indicates that the erosion is not terrible. And uh, spiders like to make their burrows where they're not going to be just going with the rain the, the very next year. So these are the areas you have to check. Look at this, an old burrow. This is silk that I'm taking apart here. And right next to it, a currently active burrow. Uh, this one I'm going to dig up. Three, two, one. So you just saw me take the lid off and here it is. It has kind of a funny shape, it has two little ears where the hinges end. And now I'll dig up the rest of it. I was kind of hoping that the spider would sort of be at its entrance, but it turns out that it is stuck shut because um, it's been fused just slightly. All right, looks like this one didn't have any spider in it. Kind of odd, but it happens sometimes. So on to the next one, I guess. We have a burrow in here, but there's a big rock here. So I don't think I have the space to actually dig it up, but I thought I'd show you the burrow anyway. And there it is. You see the spider right there? <laughs> Grabbing at the door. Well, you're safe from me, buddy. Can't get to your your burrow. You built it in the right place, I guess. Here's our next burrow, all nestled in here. See it right there. And there's actually one right here too. It's a smaller one, and for some reason it has this weird clump of dirt on it. But it is still a trapdoor spider. I'm not gonna dig that one up. It's smaller and considering I've I've already seen a good number of larger trapdoors. I'm just gonna stick with the larger ones and leave that guy alone. All right, our burrow is in here. Let's get to digging. I just saw the spider uh, shoot out. Here's our door. Here's our door right here. Nice one. And uh, the spider keeps poking out, but there's no way of getting him out until I reach the end. But these guys have a really short um, burrow. And that's why it was so easy to get to the end of the last one. Uh, so it'll only take a minute or two more. Well, I got the end of the burrow here. And if I crack it open, there should be a spider in there. Let's see. I don't want to hurt the spider, of course. <laughs> Come on. Well, I don't know if you can see it or not since uh, the camera's in the sun. There you have it. Hebestatus thevenetti, thevenet's trapdoor spider. Aside from tarantulas in uh, California, this is the largest Mygalomorph that lives here, um, tied with Bothriosidum californicum. I have not seen any evidence that suggests that one is larger than the other. And it makes sense, these are very closely related. And although these are defensive spiders, if you poke them, especially near the cephalothorax, if you just let them walk on their own accord, well, this one's just sitting here, but if you let them do their thing, they generally won't strike at you. Although I have met trapdoor spiders that just staying still like this would strike at anything below them or near them. And here we go. Now it's on the move. It's trying to dig into me or something, I don't know. Look at this. There's a fallen door here. And uh, I think it came from that door right there. So at some point it fell off or the spider rejected it. 
And so I had to build a new one after it tumbled down this hill. I'm leaving the set of dirt cuts. I was just poking around. I'm gonna try to find a new one. Because that one was, it was quite long, it was pretty good. But I think I thoroughly searched most of it. And it's probably a better use of my time if I go find another set. They don't seem to be rare by any means. So it shouldn't be too difficult to locate some more. Here is our next cut here in the dirt. And we have two spiders. One of them is here. The other one is on the side here. That one's slightly smaller and I'm only looking to dig up two adults. All right, time to get working on this one. I'm gonna take the door off first as usual. Ready? Let's do it. Oh, well, the spider's right there. Well, as you just saw, that was quite convenient. I just took off the burrow and the spider was there with it. This is the first time I've ever experienced this. And right now, the spider is still holding on to the burrow um, door. And I can't pull it up because it thinks that it's still in there. And there it is in there. And those two little holes you see there on the burrow lid, those are for her hooks when she wants to pull the door down. Sometimes there's more of them. Anyway, I'm going to hold on to this burrow, of course. If I want to keep her, I'd like to keep her house as well. So she doesn't have to make a new one, or at least make an entirely new one. And if you're wondering what the difference between this is and Bothyrosiderum californicum, the California trapdoor spider, I'll show you if it sits still. If we look at the third pair of legs down, one, two, three, in this upper segment, which is the patella, there's this little notch between that patella and the uh, tibia, I believe it is. So it's extremely subtle, but I promise you this is diagnostic for the genus. This little notch here, this little indentation, that's not very visible, is something that sets, sets this apart from the California trapdoor. I had mentioned that this spider is a corklid trapdoor spider, uh, which means it's part of the family Hylonoproctidae. But if you want to know the difference between these and wafer lid trapdoors or eustinizids, you'll notice that with the exception of the small hairs near the eyes there and the eyes themselves, the prosoma or the cephalothorax of the spider is quite bare, and that pretty much sets them apart fairly well from the wafer lid trapdoors, which have a ton of little setae covering their cephalothorax, which gives it a certain sheen. Meanwhile, the cephalothorax of a corklid is just shiny and lacks any little setae besides the ones I mentioned. For some reason, this particular spider is quite chill for being this species at least. And I can flip it over. You can see the underside there, which usually we can't do. I think I'd get bitten if this was any other individual. Well, that will be all for this video. So thank you for watching.